Greetings everyone, shalom to you who believe, there's Holy Spirit upon each and every one of these videos I make in hopes that you'll be able to pick up a little bit of it uh, and keep walking in the truth. That's the purpose, I believe, behind my videos is just to help people wake up so that they can recognize, uh, you know, the three sentences to salvation. Keep the Ten Commandments, keep the 613 laws, which verify and they also define how the Ten Commandments will be kept and to put your trust in our King, Yahshua, our Messiah. And today, uh, well, here yesterday, before sundown anyway, it just finished up the Day of Atonement. There's many out there that are going to want to keep uh, the feast in October because they have no understanding, it appears, that the feast circuit is actually set by the green ears of barley on Mount Zion. And uh, they're going to be a month off. A lot of these had started keeping the feast around the proper time here, the seventh month. And then they decided because the king did not have this rapture, which he never spoke of, that he's going to have. There's a lot of misconceptions that are out there. And I'm not trying to degrade or put anybody down for these things. It's Everybody is searching and seeking in their own ways. Uh, there are those that have shut out the thought of even doing so. But they'll be awakened as well. And hopefully they'll have the right tool to be able to put them on the right path. That's what I try to do, but if you take a look at my videos, you'll see, you know, that uh, 100 is like a, an astonishing feat for my videos because not many can hear my words. Uh, if the Messiah was here today making his own videos, he would probably have lesser views on it than I would because very few can understand his language. And that's why I'd like to bring up this uh, video that I was watching right after the Day of Atonement. And it did bring me to tears a bit, you know, to see what's actually going on. But it's a great video, and I'm not putting down the video at all. In fact, I, re I recommend that people do listen to it and then read the comments. And, of course, it's from October 7th of 2016. Uh, he's got over uh, 4,368,000 views. And I went through his site, and I, I couldn't see any other that really came close to the amount of views on this one. So maybe there was a reason why it came to my attention. And as I was watching it, I always have this habit of going through and checking out comments to see if there's anybody out there that has uh, any understanding at all. And those that are really lost, I try to put in words of encouragement. As you can see, I got a comment right here I did. And I, I put in a few comments, uh, even to you know, the endless love of Jesus Ministries. I put a comment for him there as well. And I put one in here for this Rosanna Levine. Okay, she actually put it in there two weeks ago. And she says, I am Jewish descent and believe, repented, confessed, and accepted Yahshua. I did not confer, I repented. And accepted him as my Savior. And then she's got in parentheses the J word into my life and there is no other for he is the king of kings and uh, of all this ungrateful people better look into the book of prophet Isaiah more carefully and forget the bullcrap made up lies from Satan the evil one before they die there is no other way for salvation in this world Yahshua is the only way, the truth, and the life. It cannot be more clear than that. And there was also a comment uh, for this lady where uh, somebody was asking, uh, uh, I'm not going to find it right off here. It's going to be one of those things. But they wanted to know what she had to repent of. And in my comment, I kind of wrote back and I I let the uh, individual know that, you know, the Jews are actually a whole lot closer than most because uh, if they're a practicing Jew, because they do keep some of the laws, they do keep some of the commandments. Of course, they got the Talmud working against them. Uh, they also have the doctrines, the teachings of men, the traditions that work against them. And that's what I wanted to discuss here concerning this video and, and what this video is about is a fellow was taking all sorts of questions he's asking for questions as well in this video 
uh, for those that would like to ask Israeli people over in the land of Israel uh, who Jesus is for you or things of this sort. You know, these questions that we might ask our brothers and sisters that just don't believe that our king has come yet. And what's rather amazing is that most of these that call themselves Jews and they don't believe in a Messiah, they actually call his name Yahshua more than, you know, any of the Christians that I've seen. So they at least know his name. And the big problem that it shows that, like, uh, Rosanna Levine had, uh, which she, I don't know if she has or not. She doesn't really mention anything about her keeping the laws before or anything. Uh, so I actually assumed, and I kind of, you know, let them know that, you know, the, the repentance that she needed, if she was keeping the laws and commandments, the only repentance that was necessary was that she had been denying the Messiah for all this time, and that's where her sin was, if she's keeping the laws and commandments. However, if she just accepted the Messiah, and like most of those in churchianity today, just believes in the name and going to get salvation, well, that's where most fall short. And I'd like to show you that in our King's own writings. Uh, let's take a look first in Matthew 24, verse 21, right after we give a quick prayer. So if you'd like to pray, please do, and I'll finish up with a quick prayer here. Oh, Father Yahweh, we praise you, we thank you for the strength that you have sent to us, for mankind, that we may believe upon and to stand upon your righteous Son, your right arm, your strength, Yahshua, our King in these last days, our King of kings and ruler of rulers, who we do put our trust in, hopefully all of us put our trust in you, Yahshua, or that we will learn to do so. I pray that your laws and commandments will be great upon our minds and our hearts. We pray you'll write them in our inward parts, in our DNA, that we may never sin again, just like you said is possible in uh, 1 Jochanan, chapter 3. You said that those that love you, that love the laws and commandments, they cannot sin. And it's true, they cannot, because it's totally against them. They'd much rather die than do so. I pray that those that do listen to this video and Hopefully go to this other video that I'll leave a link to. They may be able to read and see that there is a lot of controversy, but the answers are so simple. If they'll just open their minds just little enough that they may see you, Yahshua, I pray that you'll walk on into their hearts and that you'll take them over and lead them in the paths of righteousness. And, of course, righteousness is the keeping of your commandments. And we ask these things in your holy name, Yahshua, and by the power and might invested in you, and for your name's sake, we pray that you will answer. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now here in Matthew 24, verse 21, a lot of misconceptions, like I say, you know, where people are wanting to keep the Feast of uh, uh, Trumpets all over again here in October, and uh, to keep the Day of Atonement a month late, uh, as well as, as, you know, well as the Feast of Tabernacles because the king hasn't returned yet. Well, there's certain signs here for even those that believe in a rapture, okay? There's certain things our king is saying. Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. So there's going to be this great tribulation, and a lot of those in the rapture belief base it upon the wrath of our Father, thinking that, you know, this wrath is meant only for the sinners, and it is. But <laughs> there was even wrath in David's day, King David's day. Please just type in wrath under uh, this uh, bluebibleclassic.org site that I'm reading from here and just put wrath into the search and you'll see that wrath was actually taking place in the Old Testament. Okay, so there's nothing that's going to escape this wrath completely. In fact, it says in the very next verse here, Matthew 24, 23, then if anyone says to you, or excuse me, uh, 24, 22, and unless those days were shortened, what days? This great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days be shortened, no flesh would be saved. 
but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened, okay? So that's the days it's going to be shortened. The elect will be getting sick. I mean, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, there are many curses that are coming, and some of the elect will actually succumb to these because it may be that their time, their office that they were elected for has been fulfilled and they'll be allowed to go to sleep. Now, the thing that prevents me from sleeping right now I, is apparently I haven't reached enough people with my videos. Otherwise, I would have welcomed this sleep uh, right up until I had the B word come upon me, the capital B. And the rest of that is a ride, okay? And I've been on a ride to where I really would rather see our king's return with that B word next to me as we ride together into the kingdom. And that's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, here in Matthew 24, 23, Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Now you got to realize this is not what's taking place so much right now because it says there's going to be this great tribulation. It's going to be so great that if the days weren't shortened, even the very elect would perish. There'd be nobody left alive on the earth. That's how bad it is. And then it says, after these days to be shortened, it says, then. It doesn't say before this. It says then. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. Okay, so I'll get out of that window, and let's go over to the important window. They're all important. And I'd like to read to you out of Matthew chapter 5 to help those understand that in the video that I'm highlighting here and, and talking about, you know, there's, there's many of those that were interviewed that are under the false conception that our king had been a priest. Uh, one even says that he was a priest that knew our creator's name, was the last one of that line that did, and started a religion of his own. But, you know, so many of them have these same variables going on. And then, of course, you got the Christians believing I don't mean Christians, I mean those in the churches, those of religionity. They believe the laws and commandments are done away with. So please just bear with me a couple minutes here. And I'll read this, I'll show you in plain English where everybody is incorrect. And our king actually came teaching to keep the laws and the commandments and he tells you that you have to do so. If you want to make it in the kingdom, it's a requirement that you must do. So here we are in the chapter of the Beatitudes. Matthew 5, 11, we'll start with. It says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Okay, and that goes on with me and, and the others as well. If you keep the laws and commandments and you put your full trust in our king as we're supposed to do, if you want salvation, then you will have all kinds of evil against you falsely spoken for his name's sake, and you'll be persecuted. I mean, just look at my record. Do a little research on me. You'll see why I'm seen very uh, shallowly, uh, very few views, because few can understand, you know, that I've had so many houses bulldozed and burned out and everything else. I was put in jail. They murdered me, starved me for 44 days. So this Day of Atonement was quite grievous as a reminder of what they did. But I hope that you'll come around and keep the great Feast of Tabernacles when it's to be kept. And please look at my videos to do so, so you'll see that these are some of these requirements that must be done. Matthew 5.12, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then righteous for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And you have no idea how many times the thought has come to me because nobody wants to hear what the truth is for me just to shut my mouth and, and let the world go on, let the uh, blind follow the blind, that they all fall into the ditch, but I just can't do that. I'm going to have to, I'm going to 
and have to do these videos until they either remove me from YouTube or remove me from breathing on this earth or whatever it takes. But I'm going to keep bringing these words. Hopefully somebody's going to see them. Somebody other than the few that do. You can take a look at the uh, uh, views that I have and you'll see that there's very few that actually can hear this truth. And I pray that you will and that you'll share it with others. Matthew 5.14, you are a light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now this light also is a frequency that's in you. When you start keeping the laws and commandments and your belief increases, your faith grows. It's something in you spiritually that a physical human, some can actually see. They call it an aura. It's a light that your body puts out, this holy temple. It puts out a light. It's a fragrance of our Messiah, actually. And the, and the lighter you get, the brighter you get, the more you smell like our king. And the demons know it, and they flee. Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A city, is, uh, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now this here also goes along with uh, the fellows that had talents and such. One dug a hole and put it in the ground. This is, this is what it's speaking of at the same time. He kept referring to different parables that he, he had spoken over and over again in hopes that people would see. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your righteous works and glorify your Father in heaven. Then he says here, he says, do not think. He says, don't contemplate, don't consider this. Don't even think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. A lot of people say that the word fulfill means to do away with. That's not what our king said, you know, and that's where many arguments between so many people come in where someone substitutes a word for what someone says. Uh, they can say, oh, I love you. Oh, yeah, really? Well, I'm not a sheep. I'm not a you. Who do you think you are saying that you love sheep and you want to call me one? You know, I mean, you can come up with all kinds of arguments, and that's what's going on right here in the churches today is they believe this word, fulfill, actually means done away with or destroyed or abolished it's not i mean there's scriptures in your holy scriptures that will tell you that all joy has been fulfilled well if you've ever had joy then you know that this word fulfill meaning it's done away with is a lie because how could you have joy if it was fulfilled okay i mean these are simple things please consider these things now let's get into the meat of this matter he said don't think that I came to destroy the law. Everyone believes the prophets. They're running out into all these rabbit holes, trying to think that our king's coming back at any time. It's not what the scriptures say. The Jews are incorrect. The Christians are incorrect. The Baptists are incorrect. The Catholics are in, They're all incorrect, and they're missing the mark. And you're going to see what that mark is here that our king set to show you that he didn't come to do away with the laws as the Jews tried to say he did. He didn't at all. In fact, he's going to tell you to keep them. He's just saying it right here. Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fully explain, to show you how you can keep these laws and commandments without me telling you over and over what they are. I'm showing you how to do it. That's what our king was doing. Instead of telling you, thou shalt not steal, he didn't steal. So you didn't have to put that in there all over the place. The Bible would have been, you know, as big as a, you know, a 600-car train, for crying out loud. It wouldn't be able to fit all the Bibles. There are all the words in there. If he had to reiterate and iterate on every single point from the Old Testament that he was keeping, and that's what he lived by. They didn't have a New Testament, people. There was no King James Version. There was no Geneva Bible. There wasn't any Bible. There were scrolls that was set up in the synagogues that they went to, the believers. All those in Jerusalem, every Sabbath went and they listened to the laws and commandments so they didn't have to have these things reiterated to them every time. Like when the sheep came down from heaven filled with all the animals. And Kepha was talking about, I've never eaten an unclean thing. 
Well, for that section, he would have to put in Leviticus chapter 11, Deuteronomy chapter 14, and everything that the prophets had spoke about before that concerning the unclean thing. But he was speaking to those that go to the Sabbath in the synagogues every Sabbath and hear the law. They knew what the law was. Can you get that? Please do consider it. Pray on it. Our king never came to fulfill. He came to fully preach. To open it up so you can see how to do it. Listen to what he says next. Here in verse 18. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Did the heavens and the earth get destroyed and nobody tell me? When did they? Did you see them get destroyed? Because if they didn't, then not one jot or one tittle is going to pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So if you want to say, okay, he came to fulfill this, well, okay, well, it still hasn't been fulfilled. In fact, it won't even be fulfilled until the heavens and the earth are passed away. We'll still be keeping these laws and commandments. Listen further what our king says. If you don't understand those couple verses, listen to what he says here in 519. He's starting to summarize it. Then he's going to get to the conclusion of your salvation, both for the Jew and for the Gentile, and uh, the Goyans and the heathens and the pagans and everyone else. It says, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments... Okay, so one of the least of these commandments, let's just say it's a day of atonement that just passed here, the last sundown. Okay, right now it's uh, the 19th of September 2018. So the day of atonement was from the 17th of September at sundown till the 18th of September at sundown. That was a day of fasting, a day to repent, a day to appeal to our king that we may become at one with him and our father. <clears throat> if you didn't keep it, then that's one of the least of commandments. And if you're teaching others not to keep the Day of Atonement, then listen to what you have promised to you. Whosoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you look at the very last book, be, uh, the very book before Matthew here, it's Malachi or Malachi, something like that. It starts with an M, and it's got four chapters in it. And the fourth chapter is going to tell you what the least is. The least is going to be the ashes under the feet of the righteous in that day that burneth like an oven. And it's going to burn up the grass, which people are. They're nothing but blades of grass. Until they start keeping the laws and commandments, they're unidentifiable from any other blade of grass in the field. They're nothing just for a lawnmower to come over or to be burned up. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called ashes under the feet of the righteous of the, you know, the saints in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I mean, how can you miss this? I'm telling you, please keep the Day of Atonement. You know, it's too late this year, but next year, get ready for it. Keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's coming up. Please look at my video. It'll tell you when. If you start keeping these commandments and you start teaching your fellow man and your families and your brides or your husbands, to start doing the same, you're going to be called great in this kingdom of heaven. But those that tell you not to, you know, they're your lying tithe collectors. Quit paying them, I'm telling you, please. Now, this is the ultimate conclusion of this matter. Now, we had an ultimate conclusion before by King Solomon, who said in Ecclesiastes that the duty of man is to reverence our heavenly Father. To keep his commandments, to do his will. That is the duty of man, to please our Father. Now it's to please our King so that our Father can be pleased. Now listen to this very carefully. Jews, Gentiles, pagans, heathens, uh, Christians, Catholics, Baptists, uh, uh, Buddhists, everybody, please, please, just listen to what this one verse is saying 
and I'm going to show you what it means. So please understand. It says in Matthew 5.20, For I say to you that unless, I'm saying to you, that's each and every individual that's watching this video or ever reads this book or hears the words where it's speaking of this. You, he's speaking, he's saying it to you. And he says that unless, unless your, your righteousness. See that? Unless your righteousness. Now, what is your righteousness? Yes, it's a filthy rags. But he's not talking as this righteousness as you created it. No, if you read what? That's right. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25 tells you, It shall be righteousness unto you if you keep the commandments. And that's what he's telling you right here. He says if you, you teach against them, and you break them, the least of them, then you're going to be ashes under the feet of the righteous. And then he says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Well, what righteousness did they have? They taught some of the laws and some of the commandments. The problem is they mixed in traditions of men. Doctrines of demons and devils. And our king pointed out time after time again that they weren't keeping the laws or the commandments by doing so. Our king was. He didn't start a new religion. He wasn't a Christian. And no one that follows our king will ever be one. It, it, when Paul was called a Christian, it was in contempt. It's like calling someone an asshole. You know, hey, you're an asshole. Okay, that's what they were saying to Paul when they called him a Christian. Paul was keeping the laws and commandments, though, by the love of the law. He used to keep it by the letter of the law, which put him in the same bracket as the scribes and Pharisees in the way they was keeping it. But our king says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness, your keeping of the commandments, exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven you won't make it my friends so please put all our differences aside see the thing is our king said that when he returns in the jews the yadayim actually jew is a new name it can only be up to 300 years old it's a it's you know it's it's not the proper name it was the yadayim those who pray with uplifted hands, those who trust in our Heavenly Father. Those ones got perverted through the years, okay? And like I said with Moshe out in the wilderness, when just before he had laid down, he was told that the children would go into the land of the Canaanites, into the promised land, which was the Canaanites, and they would go a-whoring after their gods. And then you got people saying, well, it came from the Phoenicians. It came, who cares? He said, whatever gods was in the land of the Canaanites, they would go a-whoring after. And that's why these Jews and such call on El and Elohim and all these things. But when our king returns, if these Jews, so-called Jews, are actually doing their best of keeping the laws and commandments while denying our king, they don't really have to repent of much. They don't have to really convert of much. They simply need to trust in the one that was sent if they're keeping the laws and commandments. And for those that are, you know, just calling on the name and thinking they can go out and eat pork and commit adultery and everything in excess because they're accepted just the way they are, well, when our king comes, hopefully you'll see that you should have been keeping the laws and commandments because you'll have a long time to discover this on the outside. You won't be allowed in there, and there's going to be a lot of the Yadayim, or the Jews, I should say, that are not going to make it in there either just because they were born of that bloodline. They won't do it. The whole thing boils down to self-control, and for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Put that in your heart. Please study it out. Look at it. I don't want to see you perish. 
I'm most likely going to be one of the last in the line, along with my bride, because she requested to be there with me. I was one called out a long time ago. I've fallen short many times, but our king has picked me up. I just want to be the last in the line to see what all your rewards are. So please, put on more righteousness. Keep the commandments better than these scribes and Pharisees. Get out of the Talmud. Get into the Torah and believe. And show your belief by doing what it says. It doesn't matter if you call Jesus Lord or God. I mean, it does in a way, but if you keep the commandments and the laws, it'll be overlooked because you'll learn our king's name when he says, if you call upon his name, you'll get salvation. You have to do it by doing what he says. So unless you're, if you're calling on Yahshua and you're eating pork, well, you're the same as all these others. Your righteousness is like the scribes and Pharisees. You're not doing it. You're adding or taking away from it. So... Let's all just get back to basics. Forget all the teachings and doctrines of men and let us put our hope in the one who was sent, our king, Yahshua. Whether you're Jew or Yadayim or whether you're heathen, pagan or whatever, doesn't matter. Everyone most likely has got a little bit of Jew in their blood. We were all created from Adam and Eve. Then Noah, you know, his wife, his three sons, their three wives. And the Jews came from a bloodline within that. And from there, they were scattered all across the earth. Everybody, for the most part, has a little bit of this in them. You're all part of this, you know, bloodline, part of these tribes. Please, let's repent. Let's do what's right. Let, let's give our king the honor he deserves. Let's be that light of the world. Let's be the city that's set on a hill and, and it, can, it cannot be put out. It says that the wasters and the weapons that will be coming forth from the blacksmith to destroy. Our father said that they cannot harm you because he created the blacksmith. And he created those weapons and wasters to destroy. But not against those who are going to put their trust in the one he sent. Please, please, pray about these things. Ask our king. He'll tell you it's true. I mean, just read the scriptures. If you have any questions, please get with me. I... Oh, I love you guys so much, man. It, 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 you sadden me. I would that I, I had seen this on the Day of Atonement. I would have uh, repented even more bitterly because it appears my message is not being heard well enough. There's so much deception out in the world. And, of course, after this great tribulation is when they're going to say, here is the Messiah. Don't go out there after him. If you understand the truth and the words that are in these scriptures, you'll hear our Messiah's voice. But just look at the views that I get on my videos. Very few hear our Messiah's voice. Very few heard him. They nailed him to a tree because they couldn't hear him. But where are you going to stand? Please stand with me. Stand with our king. Stand with the apostle. You know, Kepha and Thomas and even Paul. Yes, Paul, his words were hard to understand. He never taught against these laws and commandments. Our king kept them. He was accused of not keeping them. That's where his false accusers came in saying he changed the laws of Moshe. That's why they killed Kepha and they killed Paul and all the others, saying they did away with the laws, but they did. from our king directly and I will rejoice greatly to see you make it into the kingdom but I'm going to not rejoice so greatly maybe I will by that time you know those that chose not to obey I love you people man I hate what you do I love you I want to see you in the kingdom so may you be blessed in your studies and I say shalom to you all shalom